Hey, welcome to The Greg Kelly Show. I am so proud of this show. It is the best show on television. I am doing amazing things here. If you've been tuning in, you know that this is a different show. It is on the rise. A lot of people are talking about it, and there's no limit to what it can do, huh? I am a broadcaster like very few broadcasters, maybe no broadcasters in the world. All right. Now, I believe those things. I'll admit, a little uncomfortable to say because in America, we are told to be not boastful, right? We're supposed to be self-deprecating. I have felt that pressure all my life. You're not supposed to stand out all that much. It's polite to not boast. Oh, good job. Oh, not me. It was my team. Oh, that was great. Nah, just dumb luck, right? We've all said that before, but why? I actually think it's unhealthy. And we all can't be Trump, of course, but does Donald Trump do that? Of course he doesn't, all right? If you wanna be the president of the United States, I think you have to have a healthy ego. And by that, I mean healthy, like it's actually good to see yourself like this. I'm like a smart guy, you know, I'm really smart. I think I'm a great father. I'm a very stable genius. I think I'm such a genius. I'm a great Christian. I'm a big businessman. I, I have tremendous business. I'm a very smart guy. I got good marks. I was all this. I went to the best college, the Wharton School of Finance, which to me is like the greatest business school. Now, regular people don't talk like that, but regular people can't be the president of the United States. I think there's something to this. I actually think it's very, very healthy. And more people should not beat themselves up and put themselves down publicly. Now, tragically, the self-deprecation is like the letter of the law at the Pentagon. The Pentagon, right? These guys are responsible for winning wars. But over the past 40 or 50 years, somehow it's become very stylish to say, oh, I'm just a general, I'm, I'm not that good at anything. <laughs> um, they do it, and it's wrong. Thank you all for being here, and I know it's a very, very special day, and um, I can assure you that I was not magna cum laude, did not major in physics, was not Phi Beta Kappa. <laughs> Although I graduated, it was just barely, and I was in the half of the class that made the top half possible. Good to see you. Some familiar faces. I'm shocked that you're here since you know me so well that you would spend your time to, to listen to what I have to say. But. And, and I told her, I said, you know, the problem, I guess, we're newlyweds, I guess the problem is that I'm a perfectionist and you're not. And she said, yeah, that's exactly right. That's why you married me and I married you. <laughs> I think if 35 years ago somebody said, gee, Dick, we see you as a four-star Air Force general uh, standing on some stage at Kansas State delivering some lecture I'd have been the first one to start laughing. The uh, loudest laughter, though, would have come from all my friends who know me quite well. It's cute, I guess, kinda, but not for a four-star general. Yeah, and um, do you think MacArthur would have put himself down like that in public? How about Eisenhower? Was he into self-deprecation? Did the troops wanna hear him put himself down on the battlefield, even as a joke? You know, it's kind of no wonder today's current crop of military generals can't get along with Donald Trump, it seems, a lot of them at least, because Donald Trump doesn't play this self-deprecation game. And self-deprecation, you know, it kind of lets you off the hook. When Mark Milley goes out there and brags about how dumb he is, no one's going to expect all that much. When we lose Afghanistan and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has already said publicly a thousand times how dumb he is. Well, that lets him off the hook in some way. In some way, shape, or form, it does. It lessens the pressure. It lessens our expectations. Donald Trump would not have let this happen, in part because he told everybody he's a genius. He has to live up to that. He has to live up to that. You know, there are a lot of folks out there who say, they like President Trump's policies, but not his style, not the bragging, not the boastfulness, not the brashness. I've always liked his style. The policies, yes, but also, even especially, the style, the candor, the authenticity, that's what makes it work. Now, Mark Levin, 
I'm a fan of. I don't get to listen to the show as much as I'd like, but I happened to catch it last night. And he had this remarkable uh, speech from a professor by the name of Tom Klingenstein at the Claremont Institute. He makes the same point that it's the style of Trump, actually. It's the essence of him that's just as important, if not more important than the policies. Take a look. Trump was born for the current crisis, the life and death struggle against a totalitarian enemy I call woke communism. Trump is a manly man. In present time, when manhood is being stripped of its masculinity, traditional manhood, even when flawed, is absolutely essential. Trump ripped apart people he thought were weak. Sometimes he went overboard, but his supporters excused his excesses because strength is in such short supply. Trump has the courage to defend his own people. Trump plays to win. When you're in the right, you have a moral duty not just to fight, but to win. He, unlike the woke calm, loves America and wants to preserve the American way of life. Trump is unreservedly, unquestionably pro-America. I love it. And you heard what the professor said. Strength is in such short supply. Indeed it is. We have generals. We have a military at times bragging, joking about how weak they are. That's not good. That's not good at all. So uh, we thank Professor Klingenstein and Mark Levin. Hey, strength may be in short supply, but there are some strong people out there, and I am very impressed. Here in New York State, we got a guy named Lee Zeldin, a congressman. He may be the first Republican since 1994 to take the governor's mansion away from a Democrat. He's within four points of Kathy Hochul, who is a total disaster. Take a look at Kathy uh, campaigning this past weekend. Look at the guy next to her. Yeah, that's Al Sharpton. Uh, she's campaigning in what they call a rose garden type strategy. All she's doing is showing up at ribbon cuttings and things like that, you know, pretending that she's a governor instead of actually being a governor, helping us with this horrible crime problem we have. It's no surprise that she is ducking debates with her competitor, Lee Zeldin. Uh, no, she is not interested in debating. Uh, she's been invited many times and she declines. Who else do we have here? This is happening a, a lot with Democrats. Carrie Lake is ready to take on her opponent, uh, Ms. Hobbs, but she is absent from the debate stage. Oh, and Dr. Oz is ready to take on uh, Fetterman. Uh, Fetterman has been touch and go. Actually, it looks like he may be debating Oz. It's back on. Could it be on? Yeah. Uh, he said he's open to a debate. Now, that's going to be one interesting debate. Number one, I want to go back to Trump for a moment. He's totally got the number of uh, Mr. Fetterman here. Fetterman may dress like a teenager getting high in his parents' basement, but he's a raging lunatic hell-bent on springing hardened criminals out of jail in the middle of the worst crime wave in Pennsylvania history. He wants everybody out of jail. <laughs> Guy in his parents' basement doing drugs? Is that what he said? Yes, that's what he said. Fetterman, I'm sorry. And what is going to happen in that debate? Fetterman had a stroke a couple of months ago, and I hate to say this, but I think we're still seeing the effects. Please understand the stakes in this race. Send me to Washington, D.C. to send so I can work with Senator Casey and I can champion the union way of life in Jersey, in, excuse me, in D.C. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's an honor. I live eight minutes away from here. And when I leave tonight, I got three miles away. Dr. Oz in his mansion in New Jersey. You've got a friend and you have an ally. Send me to Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steelworkers. Wow. Uh, 
Not good, not good. He could just, he really wants to go to Washington, D.C. He could just take the train there. Uh, we'll see what happens, folks. All right, final word for those in the military, okay? If you are wearing our nation's uniform, that means you're smart, that means you're strong. Don't lie to us and tell us you're weak. More importantly, don't lie to each other at those gatherings you have and put yourselves down. That has got to stop. I don't know who made it fashionable, but it doesn't work. It never did. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. September is historically the worst performing month for the stock market, so you better be ready for it. The Fed continues to aggressively raise rates, and J.P. Morgan is forecasting another mega rate hike September the 21st. Is that why Jamie Dimon said an economic hurricane is coming our way? Well, gold and silver have remained remarkably stable despite the Fed aggressively raising rates today. The Patriot Gold Group has a special incentive for Newsmax viewers. Huge! Now precious metals investors can enjoy the No Fee for Life Gold and Silver IRA on qualifying rollovers or enjoy free, discreet, insured shipping on all direct gold and silver purchases. Here's the number, 800-356-4470. Call 800-356-4470 today. 